Right. Okay, guys. So we're on the first podcast episode. We're calling it The Edge. And we're doing this like alongside aftermarket arbitrage and we want to connect more of our members. And we know that like, well, anyone who's a member of aftermarket arbitrage knows that Matt has played a pivotal role since day one. Come on. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here, mate. Thank you, mate. Glad to have you. And like, I think we want to like, we want to like sort of get into it and talk about it because you've been with us since literally before we launched the business. I and think I remember so, yeah. We, a couple of weeks before. Yeah, I remember messaging, messaging you on Facebook um, or Instagram, whichever one it was. Instagram, yeah. Yeah, and we had a chat before and then like you believed in the product straight away. Yeah. And I think the day that we launched, the Hooters uh, video went live. Yeah, not again. Yeah, yeah. And it was, um, it worked in tandem. It was a good great. day for everyone, that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> as I remember when you were on that actual video, when you were talking about it, some guy was in the park, I was like, what are you on about? Yeah. Like, how are you I making that I tried to money? explain it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, yeah, I've got you a sign up right there. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been great. So like with this podcast, we want to sort of touch on people's success. Like we want to connect with entrepreneurs and learn about the difficulty you've had in building your business. We know that you've been extremely successful. You've got multiple businesses and we want to learn from you and then give value back to the community. And uh, to anyone who's like, whether you're like at university, you're at college, like, and you or like whatever you're doing and you don't feel like working the traditional nine to fives for you, or you don't feel like even going to universities for you. We want to be able to show you that like, there's, un, there's like avenues to wait to make money that aren't really traditional. And like, that's something that I feel yeah, like definitely. you've, you've learned yourself. And the entrepreneurial story told a lot to people online and in the press is not everyone's Elon Musk or, you know, there's Correct. normal people like me and you yeah. that are doing okay, we're, we're terrible <laughs> at school. Yeah. You know, like I think that is glamorized a little bit to something that's not, mm -hmm. which would be good to talk about because I think it's very apt for anyone listening that's thinking about it or don't think they've got what it takes. I think, yeah. I think it's a, it's a brilliant thing to be doing and I'm glad to be here. Exactly. And Talking that's, about anything to do with this. Yeah. And that's exactly why I wanted to call it the edge, guys. We, like for anyone who's thinking about taking the leap, anyone who's going to take the jump into starting their own business and actually take it seriously, we want to help inspire you and push you towards doing that. Really got nothing to lose, have I? No, not at all. Okay, into this. <laughs> hey, great. So I think we should start it naturally with a bit of background on yourself. Yeah, sure. What businesses you started with, like, and then we'll just go from there. All right, cool. So... In, a, in the entrepreneurial sense, I was probably a bit of a late bloomer. I think I always knew I wanted to start my own business. Yeah. I definitely knew there was, I, had, I had a spark inside of me to want to do something, but I never had any self-belief. Strangely enough, it came from my, probably my parents. My dad was relatively successful in, in uh, local town sense. Yeah. My mum, not so much. We won't go into that too much, but I never had any sort of belief instilled into me whatsoever, which is strange. Um, my dad's side of the family, very business orientated, but he never really pushed me or gave me the belief that I could do anything myself, which is a bit of a strange one. So yeah. it wasn't actually until I was 27. Yeah, okay. Very late, I thought, John, I'm fed up with this life and I want to just do something that's, I think I got a paycheck once that was, you know, like sub 900 pounds on a mm. trainee cable engineer wage. And I worked two days overtime and I just got home and I thought, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah, yeah. Exchanging my time for money like this. And I think... It just like the penny fucking dropped. Yeah, yeah. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. It was like a, uh, it, was, it was so enlightening for me. Yeah, yeah. I just thought this is not the life I want to live. And from that moment f forward, I just started, it wasn't very um, educationally apt, should we put it? That's one way of calling myself a dumb cunt. <laughs> um, reading and writing is not great for me and maths is not super either. So yeah. I went on like a knowledge quest with Facebook, just basically working from my phone. Yeah. Started a Facebook page, got it to like 50,000 likes, selling cricket bats. Right. And like, that's how I started on my journey. Buying and selling, just day trading. Yeah. And so it's not exactly what you're talking about. Literally buying a product for X, selling it for Y, small margins at the beginning. And I took that, just selling a basic product into building a brand. Yeah. And I actually found out that it wasn't that I liked the most. It was the marketing side of it and understanding how socials were working at the time, which was, that was a breakout thing at the time as well, social yeah. media. Like the reach you could get at those in the early stages was mad. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so where did this, like, incentive to, to move into cricket come from? Like, what was your university background? Did it stem from there? Or? Yeah, I, I've always played cricket. I always played cricket my young years. Loved cricket. And I knew a bat maker. Um, mm. It's just literally, that's the part of an entrepreneur. You find any opportunity yeah. you can and yeah, you can yeah. ride it, ride it yeah. to you. You can't anymore. Um, 
But yeah, it was a, I got a really good deal from it. Just thought, fuck it, I'm, gonna, I'm onto this. It was a great backmaker as well, and I thought I could be a good salesman. So yeah, yeah. it was a match made in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you find, like, how, how long did it take you to scale that business to, to 50K? Pretty less? quick. Pretty quick. We're doing six-figure turnover in the first year, I think, from, from my website. I just built a Shopify. This is the thing. I wasn't very apt to anything like that. I went, found Shopify, taught myself how to make a website. I think it took me like two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Which is ages. And, yeah, but yeah. I did it myself. Yeah, yeah. And it took me eight. I made loads of mistakes. Once I deleted the site. Yeah, yeah. And, that, <laughs> like, and then I had to build it all again. Yeah. And this is perfect. Like, so the first aftermarket arbitrage website was yeah. Shopify based. Like, it is like, for anyone who like, doesn't have like, a clue in like web design or anything. It's like drag it's, and drop. Yeah, it's literally, it's so easy. And it's like, I think a lot of people like, think of these hurdles of like, oh, I'm gonna have to invest X amount to get a website built. There's so many other solutions out there like like Shopify that uh, it goes hand in hand with with a startup business. Like you keep your costs low and it's easy to we, do. We are so lucky now to have all of these things at our fingertips. Yeah, yeah. Things like Shopify, honestly, it's like, it, it might not have been the perfect website for us, but yeah. it got me into the market, yep. into a market I wasn't in before, which then led on to other things. And we were, you know, it was, it was, it was Really, yeah. really good. Really, good. really enjoyable. Learned a lot of lessons and they obviously developed to where I am now. Great. And where did, so like, what, what, what's the story with that business? I ended up making more money yep. from, because we, I taught myself how to write socials, posts and strategy really weirdly. I took it up pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. I ended up making more money from yeah. people Asking me, at this stage, it was very, very new. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, you know, maybe we're talking like seven or eight years ago now. Yeah. Ended up making more money from people asking me to run their socials. A local car garage, plumbers, carpenters, local business owners think, fuck, how, have you, how the hell have you got to 50,000 likes? Because at the time, your market, world, global leaders in cricket, yeah. like Gunnamore, Kookaburra, Grey Nichols, they had five, 20,000 likes. Yeah, yeah. 1,000 likes. That was, no one was taking it seriously. Yeah. That was me at um, 50,000. Yeah, yeah. So was that people approaching you or did you start yeah. to market yeah, to people? Did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they did, yeah. So I thought, Jesus, maybe my true skill here is not actually in the, the selling of it. It's the marketing and the, and the, the strategy yeah, behind yeah. it, which I found really interesting. Yeah, it's yeah. a whole other world. Yep. And that actually lit a bit of a flame in me. So I thought, do you know what? Stuff it. I'm going to start another business. So I was doing two businesses at once then when I probably should have been yeah. just doing the one, but never mind. Um, that became a, that became a, probably the biggest digital marketing agency in Cambridgeshire. Got it, got it. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a tough business over the last couple of years with COVID and stuff, but yeah. it's been a lot of fun. And then, you know, that's also then led on to Food Review Club. Did you, did you see any sort of uptick from COVID at all? I know you said it was tough, like, but did you not see, like, for us, we know a lot of, like, businesses were, were set up through COVID, a lot of social media, like, based... Did you see like any positive from that or was it was it in the digital year? so out of my three businesses, the digital marketing ag agency yep. suffered badly. Got it. Really badly. People were just pulling their budgets away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Obviously yeah. when you know that's the first thing. Marketing's the first yeah. to go on, isn't but it? But what that did enable people to do was to reevaluate how they were spending the money. Mm -hmm. So the clients we did retain a stronger clients, they're spending more than ever. And it probably solidified bonds, business bonds, yeah. people better than ever. Yeah, got it. So in a way, it has been good. For long term, I think it'll be, it'll be good for the business. We've cleared out a lot of the staff that were, you know, probably there for a, for a meal ticket and not particularly taking the job seriously. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're outsourcing work now. We've got the potential to scale to, to probably the level that we, we should have been all along, which is, it's, it's, it's in that, see that even in that loss there, I'm thinking about it like a lesson. Yeah, yeah. You know, but the, our takeaway went from strength to strength and, I would say Food Review Club took on a whole nother level yeah. during lockdown because everyone was at home on their phones, bored out yeah. their fucking minds with their yeah. businesses. And that's so, what uh, that, and this is where we both, it was the perfect storm for both our businesses yeah. in there, wasn't it? Like people with too much time on their hands, everyone wanted to sort of, <clears throat> for us, everyone wanted to make more money. People were getting government loans, grants, people were sat on the phones and it was like for us and, and, all the, the supply chain shocks that came as a result of COVID, it was it was the perfect storm. Um, and again, you got the positive benefit of everyone being at yeah. home. And like, did, so I think so many people in, in in lockdown quit their fucking job, or they said to their bosses, "I don't want to work five days a week in the office." Yep. 
you, it was the best reset, I think, we could for a lot of people. Yeah. Obviously, it was a very bad time for a lot of businesses that shut. I'm not saying that, you know, but yeah, yeah. for a lot of the, a lot of people that I think they've really, really reevaluated their lives and what was actually important to them. Exactly, and I think what, with your business, sorry to interrupt, you, with your business, you you actually showing someone you don't have to work. Yeah, yeah. And for, for this to you can uh, supplement your income with this, this and this. Live the life you yeah. want. This is what I say on Food Club when we're yeah. promoting you guys. It's, it's brilliant. And and that's like something that like one of our like. One of our members that's been most successful, he had a, um, a really, really good job paying six figures and he was just due to start before COVID and they kept him on throughout COVID, um, kept him furloughed. And then because of aftermarket, he never went back. Because of that freedom, like it like- said, happiness. Yeah. Everyone like, COVID like gave people a taste of like what they could actually be doing with their day-to-day -day lives outside of work while still receiving money. And like, that's sort of like what we want to do with aftermarket where- you can live, like, you, you can have freedom and have flexibility. We can still be earning money. Like, w with our new Amazon venture, we've got people that have a store set up, so they've got money coming in, like, consistently. And it's sort of like, it's it's echoed the effect that, the COVID, like, COVID had for us. I think people can get wherever they want to have it, can't they? Yeah. If you want to have that, dare I say, it, passive income of just, yeah. you know, putting process up with your Amazon, the incredible Amazon stuff that you've got going on yeah. at the moment. All those people out there listening and want to go, do you know, no, fuck that. I want to get involved with my hands. I want to earn 250 grand a year. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it's the world's your oyster. Whatever it's makes possible. you happy with it, you can yeah, do it. And I, that's what I love about it the most. Yeah. You're also helping people that, like myself, is what echoed with me so heavily. Like, actually in my heart. Not even like, yeah. there's not a fucking sales pitch in my heart. Is that I was that person who didn't think I'd... And you're literally showing people how to buy it, where to buy it, yeah, what yeah. to flip it for. Like... Show me another business that does that. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. That Like, we got, like... On oh, your own terms, too. Literally. Like, that's something that, like, what you've just said there. Like, we get a lot of people who are, like, if they make complaints to us, if we're not making them, like, if, like, they feel like whatever issue we've got with our business. But yeah. like, at the end of the day, I'm saying, like, our business exists to make other people money. And there's not a lot of businesses that are actually like that. Like, yeah. it's, like, it's very unique in the sense we only, we only succeed if our members make more money yeah. than, like, what they're putting in. Like it's, it's, yeah, it's a very unique setup. It doesn't like, suit, uh, one thing I will say with after my go, it doesn't suit lazy bones. No. Like if you're, mm -hmm. you've, you've still, you've still got to put the work in. You've still yeah. got to, like with me, with the socials now, every day I'm looking at trends, looking at what's hot, what's not. Even if I'm not posting, I'm looking, I'm observing, I'm trying to learn, I'm looking at my stats. Yeah. You've got to be looking like with your guys on after my cover drive, you were looking at the, um, the different markets. What's, yeah, yeah. What do you think is going to be popping off? You've yeah. got your eye on the ball. Maybe you'll see something before it happens and you can get in early or... We've got to spot the trend. Spot the trend, yeah, exactly yeah. right. But if you're just, you're, you're making making calls after things have popped off, you, yeah. you know, you're probably behind the curve. Yeah, you're not really exactly. investing much time into it. And guess what? You're probably not going to get the rewards out of it long term. Exactly, correct. It's not all positive though, is it? No. We've both had some backlash from it. How, how have you found that now? Obviously, two, you're two years in. Yep. For has it settled down a bit? So Do people understand it a bit more? It's only got worse for us. As uh, yeah, as a result of, um, I'm pretty sure everyone's going to be aware of the console debacle that we've had, the, like the PS5. Bring it on, I'll talk about this all day long. Yeah, PS5, Xbox shortages that we've had, and our members have made ridiculous amounts of money. Like, Do the people we, who are complaining know that you, they could just get them through you and not exactly like, and it's just like, like for us, like we, and this was like, so we did... Um, an interview with the BBC. You're helping people. Yeah, yeah. Like, and like people, they were saying like, do you not feel bad? Like blah, blah, blah. But I was saying like, really? like, people who can't get them, they can sign up to your website. Yeah, exactly. This is what I said. So I said, you pay 30 pound and then you get one and then you leave. Like if that's what you want to do, if that's your ultimate goal. Where, but then like people saying we're still depriving people. But if, <laughs> yeah. we, if we weren't available as a service, there would still be a supply shortage. Yeah. Like it would just be like, you still not be able to get one. We're helping you get one faster. We're, we're expediting yeah. the process for you. So if you don't want one, I mean, if you want one, but you, you're you not bothered about the time, fine, don't pay. But if you want to get it right now, 30 pound solves that answer, like the question. So it's like, yeah, like for us, like my, the backlash we've had recently, like we, we had Sky News, BBC, Game and Bible, everyone picked us up. And like, I like my brother, like managing my emails, like, and we just got, death threat after death threat after death threat. People saying like, your family must be so disappointed in you. Like, I've, had, I've like, had it as well, yeah, but like, just even being associated with, yeah. with you. And I will not back down on this and fucking inch because I believe actually you're putting the control back into people to change their lives. Yeah. That For me, that far outweighs 
a spoiled brat who can't get hold of an Xbox yeah. or a PS5, and actually they can. It's not like you've taken the entire market. Yeah. You can. Yeah, and that's where, like... like me, this is the world we live in. Yeah. Like for, for me, like, now, like, I can brush it off quite easily because I see... Because being the owner yeah. of Aftermarket, I get to see the positives that we have. Yeah, exactly right. That's exactly yeah. what I was about to say. The positives for me far outweigh yeah. any negative. If there is any negatives at all, yeah. the positives for me, like, you're changing yeah. people's lives yeah. and the, the amount of smiles you're putting on people's faces, yeah. I think the kids will get over it. Yeah, like we have people come to us like one of our members, he had 20K of gambling debt. He's out of debt, now in profit, changed his life. We had people that um, like we've bought, like they've been able to buy cars. They've been able to do up the garden, buy the kids' garden furniture. They've been able to renovate the house. Like it's like when you see the positives, yeah, you can yeah. switch off to the negative so easily. Um, it's, it's, um, I just, I'm super passionate about it. I absolutely love it. If you, if you live at, like I did, live so many years thinking you wouldn't do anything with your life to then have things like, I know I'm not, I'm not a full-time trader like what yeah. you guys are, but I still live in the same circle of yeah, yeah. being an entrepreneur and, and what everything that entails. Yeah. So I, I kind of feel in the same bracket. I'm just, it's when you've lived so many years in that shadow of, oh, I'm not going to achieve anything to now with this sort of tools in your, on your phone and a community yeah, yeah. with people like you in it and me in it and other people that are, that are yeah, yeah. No, very knowledgeable. No, and, and that's it. Like, it's what it's, a great community to yeah. be a part of. It's, this, these are, this is access that to people and to systems that Mrs. Jones, who was giving me shit grades at school, was, yeah. was, never thought it would be. You know, it's, I think it's <laughs> fucking brilliant. Yeah, and like that's the same for me. Like, I never really, like, yeah, like building a business has been like great, but like for me, like the actual like where I felt happy about what I've done is like when we've had members who are like seventeen years old and say like. You've, you've, you've managed to take me away from a, a dark circle of people. I was yeah. going down the wrong path. I've now been able to pay for my own car. I paid for all my driving lessons. I've took the strain off my mum and dad. I feel like I'm on the right track and you've steered me away from people That's that brilliant. were going to take me on the wrong path. Like, that is rewarding. Like, and I will, like, that is better than any monetary gain for me. Like, just here that we've had a positive impact on someone's life. Um, so, yeah, it's like, yeah. I think, what, but what about yourself though? Like, when you started with Food Review Club, how did you deal, like, did you, like, obviously there's trolls. Like, we get them on our posts all the time. How did you sort of deal with that at first? Um, I don't think I dealt with it very well at the beginning because it was so alien to have someone with, like, very, really, really negative opinions about you. Yeah. Um, and and it's, it's, one, it's, it's interesting to think, like, where do these opinions come from? Like, yeah. how is someone that sat down the screen and got enough time to, like, build up that amount of hatred towards someone they do not even know? Yeah. I, I, I think I've just got... I feel slightly blessed. I'm either stupid or I've got a thick skin to just ignore them in a weird way. Like I felt like there was times where I nearly, nearly didn't want to continue. Yeah. But we kept going with it. And I'm so thankful now yeah. that I didn't jack it when, when things got a bit hot. Yeah. Like, because it's quite tough when people are not only me, but you know, my wife. I, rem and, I remember that. Yeah. Was like this, like putting, you know, orders. like there's, I've had loads. It's the same. I think, you know, there's, but now I look at them like, I actually quite like the trolls now. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it, it's a bit of a fuel on the fire and yeah. they really love you. They don't know, uh, they don't, they can't have a negative opinion about you really. They don't even know you. You know what I mean? And like a lot of them, like you see like. It's, when, sad, it's sad. Yeah, Jack. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sad if some, they don't, if you, if I walk past a busker in the street and he's the worst singer ever. Yeah. Do you think I'm going to go over and tell him? Listen, yeah, yeah. mate, you're fucking terrible. Yeah, yeah. You need to jack this in. <laughs> this is not your future. Yeah, yeah. In fact, you're probably the worst busker I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, you just no. say, bless him. Walk on. Yeah. It's the fucking internet. If you don't yeah. like my content, I don't know what Jack's up to. Yeah. Go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. Go and watch. If you're into Lego, go and watch Lego. Yeah. If you like gardening, go and do start a yeah. gardening Instagram. Get the fuck off my page. Yeah. So I love what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. And we're going somewhere else. And that, it's like this. So like, we have people that like they'll email us and say. You need to you need to shut down your business right now. And I'm thinking like, why do people think? Why are they so triggered by yeah, that? And like, why do you think that your email is going to make me shut down my business? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's sad though, really, because they, they're so triggered by it. Because probably because it resonates with their head. Yeah, yeah. Or I don't know, but yeah, yeah. I, I don't mind them much anymore. I kind of quite like them to be honest. We just I just don't give them any airtime if they're really abusive. They just get blocked straight away. Yeah. Just try and clear the clear out that bad energy from my platform as best we can because we've we've actually got a really good bunch of. Um, fans and followers now, yeah. and I think they're really buying into the journey, and it's probably the best it's ever been. I yeah. want to try and keep it that way. Yeah. So having a really nice party of people, yeah, you've got yeah. someone in the corner who doesn't want to be there. You've got the same consistent people as well. Yeah, every they've time. got, like, got amazing... Uh, like, that's it, and that's, like, something that was, like, unique about, like, and 
But I watch your content religiously yeah. before starting aftermarket. And that's why like, I was like, this guy, like I need to try and work with this guy if it's possible. And like, but I knew that like everyone in the comment section, like it is a genuine community. Like you've got a following of people yeah. like who trust you and they believe in what you're saying. And that's like something that not like, that's very unique. Not a lot of people have that. Like any normal Instagram influencer, like that, that people are mad, like numb to them. Like they might follow them, but they don't really engage. Whereas you, like you've got active followers. Yeah, sure. And I think that's why I liked, and my pitch with you guys was so believable because I, you, you probably can hear it for yourself now. I'm, I really am believing it. I'm walking, talking proof of what, stepping outside of your comfort zone in terms of what you think you can yeah. do, achieve academically. Yeah. As long as you know, I'm walking proof of that. Yeah. You know, so I really believe in your product. So that's why we've been such a great partnership now for a couple of years. And I, hopefully that won't change uh, it's forever. Be for the I, I, I love working with you guys. Yeah, yeah. If, you know, if, if we've, I've had some people that I met once. I got, I met, I'll give an example. A guy I met in London. I won't say his name out of respect, but I met him once through mm. a mutual friend. Got a chat and I think he followed me on Instagram. Mm. I got a, I think I've had a random message here and there from him saying like this, I was going to try this, going to try that, but certainly no dialogue. Mm. One day I got a message from him out of the blue saying, uh, I think I owe, owe you a beer, mate. And he said, like, signed up to off my, he's made like, yes, he made yes, like yeah, five yeah. figures. Uh, you sent me a screenshot of that yeah, message. Yeah, it's over 10 yeah, grand yeah. he's made. Yeah, yeah. Profit. And he said, I owe you a beer. And I was like, why? And he just sent me a thing. I was like, mate, fuck, that's brilliant. Yeah, I was going to send it to you. Like, this yeah, is just yeah. great. Yeah. And, but if I post that, it looks like I've um, it's just manufactured sales, it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. this is not it's true. It's just great. Yeah. And that's the thing, like, you can message me that privately. Like, it doesn't have to yeah. go out. Like, yeah. we see wins that, like, not every one that doesn't go on social media. I think it's brilliant. I think yeah. it's amazing. Like, you know, um, a lot of people listen to this now. I guarantee it because I'm that person. If you're, there's like, I don't know the, the ins and outs of it. There's a lot of different ways people can learn. There's seven different ways. Yeah. But at school, you're, it's just one way. Rememberizing facts. Yeah. Go and do a test. Whatever, what you've remembered over the last three weeks. Yeah. I can't remember what I did yesterday. <laughs> so like, you get, I used to get to the paper and you're like, I can't, I, I can't even understand the question. Let alone what I'm trying to articulate and write down on the thing. So I used to get terrible results. And that, that means you get shit grades. And it means you're going to leave school and you're going to be nothing with yeah, your life. Yeah, yeah. And there's so many kids that are out there that it's not the, not the case. You're, there's only one way of... Um, being graded, you know, it's yeah, like asking yeah, exactly. a, who said that thing? It's like asking a fish to climb a tree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just can't do it, but put a fish in the water involved. and you'll yeah, be yeah. swimming away. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a really great analogy. Yeah, I agree. I think something that I, I want to pull it back to is that, so you talked about the um, sort of building up your cricket page. Mm. And where did Food Review Club come from? Because I know I'll tell you. a lot of people will want to know about that. Yeah, cool. He's, this is a great story. So with the digital agency, Obviously, I had my finger on the pulse with that, with what was working at the time. And it was video content was going mad. Facebook had just started pushing live content and video was popping off. Like, that's where your organic reach was going. They wanted people to push video because obviously they could put adverts on it, which monetized them. And so you got to play the game, right? Yeah, yeah. So we started making these. We had a, a great videographer working with us. I started doing these vlogs once a week. Um... They're quite, kind of funny to watch now because I thought they were pretty good at the time. Talking business and like trying to be like Mr. Edgy. Yeah. We used to wear like chinos and the fucking boat shoes and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> it's really bad. No, just trying to be someone I wasn't yeah, a little yeah. bit, but you know, trying to play up to the, the, the image that we were trying to achieve at the time. Yeah. So we were making these vlogs. So I think I did like 10 of them, I think. And however hard I tried to share them or tag everyone I knew to watch it, share it, like it, just put this in your, you know. Yeah, yeah. I think the most views we ever got was like a thousand or 1500 would be like crazy. Yeah. Most of them like 800 views. Like they're really, really bad. But they, I thought they were good, nice production, a lot of effort, a couple of days to film and, and whatnot. And then I saw Dave Portnoy doing his pizza reviews. Yeah. And I watched 30 of them in a row. <laughs> I've done these that same. Yeah. And then <laughs> what I thought to myself, he's, he's a one take wonder outside a shot. The fact I watched 30, yeah. I, I knew not only did I like that style of content, but he had my fucking attention. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Do you understand what I mean by this? Yeah. Like he had my attention for that long yeah. and I was like, wow, that's something special. Yeah. Not the fact of just he had my attention. Yeah. I thought, Do you know what? He was so funny and I thought, I think I could do that. Yeah. I, think, <laughs> I thought we've got some great food in England. Yeah. Fish and chips, curries, yeah. Chinese, Sunday roast. Like everyone has their <laughs> own little hotspot. Yeah. Like food is big in our culture, right? Yeah. So I thought to myself, oh, I'm going to try. My first review I did in the dark, filmed on a potato, <laughs> got 8,000 views. Right, it was Very terrible. Nice. I was yeah, nervous. Yeah. I didn't know what I was saying. I said stupid things. I even said one, 
one bite, everyone knows the rules or something really <laughs> muggy like that. It was so embarrassing. Honestly, yeah. the hate. Fucking hell, I couldn't believe I said it. Um, we've got 8,000 views. I'm like, wow, that's, that's, like, that's like eight times what I've been getting for these high production, nice camera, yeah. like formal shit. I was like, wow, that's, that's interesting. Maybe it would work over it. I think my third one was 50K. And that was when it got really interesting because I did the local celebrity, play, not celebrity place, but like the one you'd go yeah, to after yeah. you were pissed. That, it's called Chicken Licking. Uh, it's a live <laughs> shout out to you guys. I did that and I got 50K. Yeah. A lot of the comments were, oh my God, like then someone would tag their brother who's gone to Eunice and say, have you remember this place? Or and it went mad. Like, it, and I thought to myself, wow, if you did this in every town, going to not like this far fetched food you'd watch see on TV that you're never going to achieve or see going to someone's local town and doing this. Yeah. I thought maybe it could really explode. And with that attention, I knew at that point, 50,000 views for the time was a lot. I knew with that attention, I could hopefully down the line monetize it somehow or, you know, similar to our agreement, whatever. I didn't really know at the time, but I knew I had with, with people's attention, I could do something with it. Yeah. And that was very yeah, vague yeah. at the time. So, Pretty early on, Jack, I knew yeah. that I was onto something. Yeah, yeah. And like, so how quickly did it scale in terms of like your, quick. Your, your, your likes on your page? Pretty quick. We got we got monetized maybe after about eight or nine months. Yeah. So again, that was a lot of... So, so was it working? Essentially, you were working for free for eight oh, hours. Like two years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's like another thing. It's like, I think a lot of like, again, we see it with aftermarket and like people in general, they want that quick success. But it's about you actually have to put some work in. You, and like that shows it like two years. Yeah, like, yeah. I used to love it though, bruv. This is the thing. When you do something, you, you I used to love it. I used to yeah, beg Jess. Work. Something you should see the argument side of Jess. Mm. Like, please can we go out reviewing tonight? She's like, where do you want to go? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I'd literally get my phone out and go, where can I get within an hour? Hartford. Mm. Let's go to Hartford, Jess. She's like, why? It's mm. cold. It's raining. Mm. I'm like, please. It's a drag out. She's a stand like this. But she won't understand this. And the fucking beanie and the gloves is like filming. Like, can we go now? Mm. Um, so, and I used to get, get reviews done. It was, it was like the best time ever. So this, this like for you, like it's completely natural. It's not manufactured, is it? Like, no, not at all. I you, absolutely you. love it. Yeah. It felt like a, it felt like a calling. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so I was lucky to find, I suppose, but, but yeah, it was, it's been an amazing life. It's obviously, it's, that's what people don't see is that there's a lot of driving and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like self-funded as well. Yeah. You know, it costs a lot to go out all these night, different nights. You run other businesses, but it was just, it's just amazing. Yeah. You've got to move correct. You don't want to move too fast. Like, Instant success doesn't come to us, just bollocks. Exactly. You, you know, when to post, how to post, what, it's all like everything is, is a strategy. Yeah, yeah. And how long did it take you, like, so like something like, I feel like people would relate with now with Aftermarket, like we've like, like I'm only young, like it's my first business, like, and we struggled with strategy and stuff like, how did you like, how did you manufacture yours? Did you, did you speak to other people? Did you learn from others? Or was it something that you've just sat down and thought about yourself? Well, by this time, I was probably three or four years deep into the digital agency stuff. So I, I would say I was pretty clued up yeah, yeah. with strategy and what I thought worked. Yeah. But then trial and error. Yeah. We made, still making now mistakes and you just learn from it and you just slowly grow. There's not really anyone that I could have sp spoken to in terms of guidance, really. Oh, if there is, I'm going to be, they will shoot me for not saying it now, but I can't, not off the top of my head. I think we're, yeah some good people to speak to and stuff about content, but you've got like self education with YouTube videos now, yeah, like yeah. your platforms like yourselves, it's, it's not a shortage of, of great content out there from people that were doing similar stuff anywhere in the world, you know? And that's the thing that like Elon Musk, like I was reading something where he said like, you'd like, he like, and I went to uni, I loved uni. I, I love studying. I love the education. Like for me, I was like very passionate about it. But what he said is correct. Like in that you don't, University is like probably now, it's probably not necessary. Like you can learn everything on YouTube now. Everything that, if you want to start a business, there will be a guide for it on YouTube somewhere. Mm. And like, it's just having that initiative, isn't it? And like sort of having that motivation just to get going and the, just that drive. The big, the big thing as well is anyone, I think I was good with this a little bit, being an ideas man. Yeah. Like you just you come up with these, the next big thing, this big, big idea. But the, the biggest thing is the ex execution of that. Yep. And staying consistent. Yep. And that was so interesting. Consistency, yeah. just consistency is a fucking superpower. Yeah. Um, yeah. Day in, day out. And just to like yep. take bad days with the good days. And like, yep. but then you've got to think like when you have a bad day, like over the long run, it's a minor speed bump and yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it smooths out. Like, but like touching on that, um, that ideas, man, like that was something with me. Like I always knew that when I was like 
starting off, like I wanted one day to like, I wanted to be successful, like to be able to like consider myself successful. And I don't think I've achieved that yet. I've still got a lot to do, but like, I knew, I'm, I think, I feel like I'm on the right path, but for me at the start, I was just an ideas guy. Like I was like with my girlfriend at the time, I remember I was talking to her about like, I had like a bit of money behind me from sneaker reselling. I was like, what do I put it into? And I was thinking, right, I might open a barber shop. Like, <laughs> and I was like, it seems like a good money maker. And then I was like, on to the next thing and then on to the next thing. And then like, I finally like, just thought like, the thing that I've been doing day in, day out yeah. and hadn't even thought about scaling it to a full-time business. Like I was like, this should be the one that I actually take full-time. Like, and it's actually just making that decision. It's like, for a lot of people, they put off setting up a company. Yeah. And they're like, oh, it's going to be too hard. It's going to take too long. You can set up a company in five minutes. Mm -hmm. Like five minutes. It's just uh, it's just education. Isn't it? yeah. having, uh, with having a good accountant, for example, yeah. and to guide like, you what your tax and all this other, yeah. other, other jazz and stuff is. It's, it's honestly it's like, unknown for yeah, people that yeah. don't know. I think like for a lot of people, it literally is like, you may as well explore it. Like it's like, it's not as complicated. It's not as hard. And like, for me, I think a lot of people, like for a lot of people and like myself, definitely like it's, you've just got to learn as you go in. Like you've got to wing it in a sense and just learn what works. You've got to take your losses, take your wins and then know that in the long run, it's going to work out. Like if you stay consistent. But as well, if we're going to talk about all the benefits, I've experienced them. We've had some great success and yeah. earned a lot of money, but I've also lost a lot and <laughs> had some losses as well. And it's, this is something that I haven't spoken about it publicly yeah. really at the moment. I haven't had, been had a platform to, but we've had some, some really big losses and, even in life, I've had some big losses. Yeah. And I'm, I'm in the mindset now where I just try and spin them into a lesson. Yeah, yeah. And learn from it as best you can and move on. I think that's a really, really big thing. And, like, and business is tough, man. Yeah. Like, we've, like you said about this bubble, we've, we've done some other businesses that just flopped, cost us a lot of money. Um, you think you can do anything if you have a bit of success, but it's not, rent is due every day with, yeah. with business and, you know, it's not all um, sunshine and roses. But well, this is like like what you've said there is like that's the mindset of an entrepreneur. It's, yeah. it's taking anything bad and learning from it. It's not just being defeated and sitting back and saying like, do you know, do you know what though, Jack? If you live and breathe it, you haven't got a fucking choice. Yeah, yeah. And what are you can do roll yeah. over and just fucking quit. Yeah, yeah exactly. No way. Yeah. I'd rather die. Exactly. Exactly. I'd, 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 I'd see it now. I'd rather die than do yeah. that. Like I've never got a choice. You know that you can, yeah, you can cry about it for a little bit, but you need to just dust yourself off and yeah. figure out what's what and go again. Like everyone that starts their own business will make a, make a mistake, cost yeah. themselves way too much money than they thought they could ever lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done it recently. Yeah. And it's, you just got to go again and just keep pushing forward. It's part of the game, you know? Yeah. Now, I know for a fact that lesson will be the best lesson I could have had down the line because I won't fucking do it again. I'll know what I'm doing, yeah. you know? And that's it. Like, it's, I think, I think, like, it's important to know that, like, like even for me, like, every day, pretty much, I wake up and I'm worried. I'm worried about business, but you can't yeah. let it slow you down. Like, it's literally, you've just got to, you just keep going with it, don't you? You don't, you, like you can't lose your momentum and as soon as you lose that momentum and slow down and like sort of sit back that's when stuff starts to suffer but also like, that's the benefit of your business as well i'm talking about traditional businesses where you've got overheads uh yeah. staff and all this sort of stuff like which there's a lot of things that can go wrong yeah um a lot of moving moving parts to yeah. the business yeah obviously there's scalability to that yeah which probably would come with a benefit financially long term but with your businesses, fairly risk-free. And that's, what, again, something I love about it so much. People yeah. is making, it's very profitable with, with, you know, buying and selling. You know yeah. what you're getting into. If you don't sell something, you can send it, you can send it back 90% of the time, probably. Yeah. You, yeah, can, yeah. you can, you can, you no, can. It's, not, it's literally 100% of the time. Yeah, cool. like, we, we, like with that, And that's the thing we push on our members. It's like, it's like why wouldn't you try it? It's yeah. risk-free. And, and that's a really interesting, for what well, I would say a traditional business owner. Yeah. Per se, it's a really interesting part of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Really, really interesting. Yeah, risk-free yeah. businesses like it doesn't exist. It's like if you, if let's say, if you wanted to go to the stock market and say, right, I want thirty percent on my investment, yeah. risk-free. It's, it's never ever going to happen. Like, and, but you've got it in this niche little market that ninety percent of general public have got no idea about, and that's why we came to you because like your audience is perfect general public. Like, it's like people that probably have no idea about reselling. And they're, they're all watching videos. They've got time on the hands. It, it, it's going to work. And like, I've been on some other podcasts and like, they said to me like, why would you go to Matt? Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, why would you go to a food reviewer to start a business? Like, it does, where's the synergy? And then I explain that. There's loads. And then, and then it worked. Like, it, it's proven. Like, it's worked. Yeah. Like, it's, 
the, the, the thesis behind it has pulled off and like, like we, I, I think I wanted to make it very clear that like aftermarket would not be where it is today without you. Like That's amazing. this would not be here right now if it wasn't for you. Like everything, Matt, like we owe a lot to you. Like, That's and it's good, been, Matt. and then vice versa, you've, yeah. been a, you've been a great supporter of our page yeah. for a long time now. And it's, it's been a lot of fun. No, I believe in your product and I wouldn't, you know, so many people who are, you know, influencers, whatever you want to call it, some bullshit, they've got an, got an audience, they'll sell anything. Mm -hmm. I've done a few things I wish I never didn't do because yeah. you need to pay the bills. You need to put food on the table, but I could say categorically that after my arbitrage is not one of them. I, you can see from my passion yeah, yeah. we're talking about, I, I lived this fucking life. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And just opening that door for people that thought they could never do it, I think it's great. So like, guys, yeah, and that's the thing, like, with like people that we've worked with before to promote our stuff, like it comes across as scripted. It doesn't come naturally. Like with you, like we know that you believe in the product. You've been, in, you, you're part like the family. You've been in there since day one and it's natural to you. Like, but you, you knew, like you understood our business model before we'd even launched, like, and you appreciated like the value and how it worked. So it's <sighs> like for you, it wasn't, it was never going to be a hard sell, was it? No. And I did just develop a new love of Yeezys yeah, at the time, yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> the, so my, uh, my ear was close to the ground. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's a few pairs yeah. sorted out. You've got everything knocking around in there now, and you've got everything. Yes, yes, we have. We've got some good stuff right there. Uh, what's, um, um, go on, you need, to give the, you need to give your members a little hot tip now. What's hot? What's, what's the best thing that you can get into at that moment? Right now, everyone needs to be getting back into trainers. Is it back? Yeah, yeah, trainers are back. Trainers are doing good right now. We're trying to push them back into it. PS5s are still like, at the moment, the bread and butter. Like for us, when we started, trainers were bread and butter and your little accessories here and there, we are cherry on top. But PS5s now, you're making like, you can do like 150 a piece, 200 a piece. That's a day's and, work for someone. Yes, exactly. And it's from doing a couple of clicks online. It's like, why? Like, it, it's it's stupid. Like the money you can make, like, it's, it's ridiculous. And then like, so hit these here, these are like 300 profit, like, Three hundred pound profit for a ninety pound pair of trainers. Like, where are you going to get that return on investment anyway? Obviously, this is funny for us because obviously uh, myself and Jess, we've both got maybe we're using the same login. I don't know. Um, we've both got it on our phones, and it just it just pop up. And I think she's got like some of her family will just like say, "I know you can get hold of Xbox Series yeah, yeah. Can you get us one?" Just literally pop up on the phone. She go, "Yeah, bought yeah. that." Yeah, yeah. We're not even sometimes we don't even, like, say sometimes. We should never said that. We don't even make anyone them. Yeah, just yeah. give them to the family, like yeah, yeah. you know, just. For the, to and, the that, kids. And, that, and that's it. Like that's. And it's that's, not even like yeah. you don't even need to sell the stuff. No, no. Obviously you, you can, but it's nice to be that person that can, can get you things. Like, it's nice. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, cool. Yeah, like, I like it's nice to, to hook people up with whatever they want. Like that's trending, popular, yeah. hard to get, desirable. You know. Yeah, and we have got we've got a lot of new stuff that's been coming out recently. We've had um, so they're called HRO trading cards, and that they're like sort of related to the NFT space. And they've been, as you know, NFTs are exploding. Um, and again, like it's just for us, it's just being up to, up to date on those trends, having the good software in place so that if our members want that product or if they bring a product to us that they're like, like, so we had someone brings a Lego collection to us yesterday. We got it monitored last night and then everyone this morning was able to scale that Lego and then they make like 40 pound profit per unit. So someone actually brought to you a product. Yes. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, so that's they like, and, and this is the thing that's good with the community is w when we've made the community a lot of money. And like, so let's say if we've made a member X amount, they'll then, if they find something, they'll then come to us and say like, because they know it's going to have a positive impact on everyone else. So they'll then give us the flip and then we can provide it to everyone else. And then we, we, we make more money that way. Like as a team, um, it's great. It's, um, yeah, it's been something, it's something that I never, I never really thought it'd get to, for me, it was at the start, it was just going to be, maybe I'll run it for a summer because I did, I set it yeah. up in between internships and my full-time job. But, Oh, as soon as COVID hit, it it, it absolutely fucking it's a, mad, it's a mad concept. Yeah. yeah. And but look, listen. Bullshitters, long term, you can fake it for a little bit, but yeah, you get yeah. found out. Yeah. If you were a one summer wonder with only riding off hot tubs, yeah. and they dried up, yeah. now what are you going to do? Yeah. Good we, luck. You're exactly. done. And that's the thing. You're done. You're, all your members are going to walk because they know you've, you're providing them no value. Yeah. You're adapting, you're evolving, you're... And like you just said, it's, you've built now a community that's helping each other. Yeah. It's like, if that isn't the best sales pitch you could ever get to be a <laughs> yeah, part yeah. of this, you've got other people that are not like your mate Tom, who actually doesn't really like you and doesn't want you to have any money. <laughs> um, these are actually people that want to help you succeed. Mm -hmm. 
you know, like okay. maybe your mum and dad are going to resent the fact you're probably making more money than them. So they're going to point you away from doing something like this. Go and get a job at the shop and earn money mm. like just like I made when I was your age. Mm. Thanks, mum, but this world is different now. You <laughs> yeah, know, this, this, it's a mad fucking concept. We're in a it. lot of people don't like it because yeah. it's so obscure that yeah. someone can buy a PS5, make £150 in 30 seconds, yeah. And you could go to work all day. Now, listen, there's nothing wrong with going to work all day. I would still do that anyway for that secure income. Yeah, I was still doing that. But, yeah, yeah. Correct. But that is an extra piece of money on the side. That's £150 mm. where you're going to take your, take your wife for dinner. Yeah. That's where you're going to save up for your deposit in your house. Yeah. That's where you're going to buy your engagement ring for your missus or whatever it might, dog, Lego, whatever it is. Yeah, that's yeah. the money you're going to live and enjoy your life with. Yeah, 100%. And that's like what? People that's... don't like it though, Jack, because they think, Oh, it can't be that easy or this, that, it's, this is not how you make money. And that people, uh, what yeah, I think that. a lot of people have is that it's not an honest day, like an honest, an honest day of like, I'm trying to say like, um, it's not an honest way to make a wage. It's because people think like, it's too easy. Seriously. Like, that, 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 this is what I mean. It's like, it's, that's, that's just, it's just not an argument. A lot of though. people think like, you've got to grind what really, is an honest day? really Don't hard. The job you hate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, but, but a lot of people think that like, if you're not doing the traditional nine to five, yeah, they're going to yeah. hate on you because you're making money too easily. But it's like, why hate when you could actually jump on it yourself and profit from it? Like there's just such an, there's such a negative mindset, I believe around anything that's sort of outside of the norm. And we're doing something that maybe the majority of people are young, like, and the older generation haven't kept up with it. So they, they want to shit on it. And that's where we've seen the, the most of backlash with the PS5. Probably, some of it is a lack of education, lack of understanding of what you're actually doing as well. It's like, a lot of people actually think you're going into people's front rooms, taking their PS5s. Yes, exactly. Literally. The kids are screaming. Yeah. The mum's having a breakdown. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, we're just wiping out streets. Yeah, yeah just yeah. taking, just like, <laughs> literally robbing people's dreams. You know, like, it's no. just not like that. No, not at all. Um, I find it funny, though. I think it's brilliant. Any any business that's helping other people, um, you know, yeah. achieve more, I think it's just great. Like, yeah. Bravo. It's been, it's been rewarding for me. Thank you. Um, so I think... It'd be interesting to go into, for you, what's next? Right, so, big thing for us, we've, you know, I've had, we started out with Jess, she's great, like, brilliant. Yep. She didn't want to do it at the start, this is funny. Yeah. She Then when we started making some money, then she quickly, <laughs> like, was like, yeah, let's do this. And she's, she's been great. She's been super. And then we've kind of transitioned now, we've, we've got Callum um, Pug Shoots, shout out to him. He's over there now playing with a peanut. Um, <laughs> Not playing with his peanut. Peanut's a dog, everyone. Yeah, shout out Peanut Pie. Yeah, shout out Peanut Pie. Where is Peanut, by the way? She's yeah, she's on the couch. Get Peanut out, Sam. Peanut. Get her over here. Come, Pete. <laughs> she's hiding on the sofa. But anyway, um, so yeah, that was the that was like the the transition now with Callum, and he's brought a lot of professionalism to the page. Yeah, we're going overseas. That you probably will see like the the standard of the cameras we're using is better. Like we're just trying to trying to evolve to the next level. And that's opened a few doors in our minds of what's achievable with looking at other sort of tech-based content creators who are using other creators and, and growing their portfolio of, yeah, Peanut. Come on, say hello. <laughs> Sorry to take you away from Callum. So, so this is Peanut Pie. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's like kind of the vibe at the moment. We're, I'm really, really would like to you know, we've we've got to the stage in terms of video views where we're top ten UK yeah, in food it's and incredible. drink. So yeah. across the across the board, which is great. And you're but, you're fighting with a big fish there, like yeah, the no, got... the only people. So before we got demonetized, which I can come onto in a bit if you want, but yeah. the only people ahead of us were Twisted Tasty Food, Food Bible, and Kitchen Nightmares. Yeah. You know, we're, you're talking the the biggest name. People's got the a game. huge backing. Yeah, They've massive, got huge mate. corporate support. Massive. They're not, they're not an independent like yourselves. Like it's, no, yeah, yeah. we're like a t we're, we're a three person team. Yeah, exactly. And we're we're punching well above our weight, but that's cool. Like, I'm not gonna, you know, like it's like we've fucking made it. No, no way. We want to. I want to go to America now. Try and crack the world. You know, like we, we, from an egotistical point of view, I'd like to be the the best food critic or content creator in the world. I'd love to yeah. be like looked upon in that. At the same time, I'd love Food Review Club to become a place you'd go to see some great food content and that doesn't necessarily have to be from me. Yeah, yeah. I'd love to start employing some other content creators, doing some other stuff or not employing, but working with, you know, and having them on our platform and just, just creating a wicked audience yeah. of people that love great food. Cause I think the mindset is changing and 
who don't want to have shit food anymore. And I think that's something that's like great, like from, from your point of view in the sense that you aren't focused on the content only coming from yourself. Like you've not got an ego issue where you no, want everyone watching you. You care more about company and actually if, if, get delivering good anything, content. If anything, I've now worked out, I've got a lot of shortcomings in terms of my my presentation. I think there's, I'd love to see a professional on the, on our platform, you know, yeah. like I don't think I am probably the end goal future for, I might be the owner of the shit. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I should maybe be driving it one day. Like we'll see. I'm yeah. really interested to explore this avenue. I see some other content greats coming through now with some of the work they're doing on TikTok and it blows me away. Yeah, yeah. With real creativity. Yeah, yeah. Like artistic flair. And again, it's like these guys are not just falling into doing that on TikTok. They're putting their time in, they're putting their graft in. It just goes back to it. Like anyone that's puts the time into this, I love it. I've got that yeah, respect yeah. for it. And like for us, like, so we've just started TikTok. And I was thinking Come at first, on. like, yeah, <laughs> and we were thinking at first it was going to be quite, maybe quite hard, like quite hard, but we really underestimated. Like we started filming like the first day, like that we ever did it. When we started filming at like 11 in the morning, finished the actual filming at like, let's say one. And then we were edited to like 11 at night, the same night. Like we just like, we were trying to do it on our own. It was like, but the, so the people that are doing this, like, a credit to them, like it's a graph, like yeah. it is hard work, it's that's, not easy. That's so slick as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, yeah, so like what we did in all those hours, it was like, it looked shit compared to what everyone else is doing. But again, but, it's about getting started. But Jack, no, I'm not having that. It, it is shit, it will be yeah. shit, but that's the beauty of it. <laughs> Your audience would love to see the, the development. Yeah, yeah. It's like a part of me wants to delete the first, my first thing, so I hate it, it makes yeah. me cringe, but no, it's that part yeah, of the journey. Yeah. And then when you build an audience and build a, a community like you've done, it will, it will, you need to keep the ones, it's yeah. very sharp in the sword. Yeah, yeah. It's not going to be very sharp on day one. Yeah. After three years of sharpening it, you'll be fucking the sharpest, yeah. sharpest sword in the, in, the, in the game. Yeah. And that's what it's about, isn't it? Like, people actually take an interest in going back to seeing the start. Like, and you've, like... I think you and Sam yeah. need to start dancing. There's absolutely... No money, no amount of money in the world to get me dancing on TikTok, man. I think you two together, you know, doing those things, like, doing, getting on all the trends, and right at the end, of be like, after my cup of trash. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No connection to yeah. the business. Just Who's the best dancer? Are you and Sam? I reckon I'm taking it. I oh, spent yeah. too much time in the club. Yeah, good, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I reckon I'm taking it. <laughs> so, I think, um, someone to touch on as well. Oh, let's actually, let's go back to being demonetized. So yeah. how did that hit you and Ugh. how did it affect you and how did you deal with it? It was dreadful. So look, I think the way I would describe this is that Facebook for us is our bread and butter. Yeah. It's just the way it is. That's the platform we popped off on first and I'll probably put most of my effort in. Yeah. When we started getting money, it was money I'd never seen before. So we just kept going with it and I really neglected YouTube didn't really care about anything else. And we, we really did put our eggs in one basket. And the same way a lorry driver is driving all day, every day, your chances of picking up a ticket, even if you're not being particularly rogue, yeah. uh, heightened. Yeah. So with Facebook, if you're a monetized partner, you're a partner, so you need to play by the rules. Yeah. And for various bits and bobs, we picked up a, a, our third strike. Yeah. Which demonetized us. And it was pretty, pretty serious. I think we had a couple before where I'd made a mistake uploading, you know, copyright music. And I shared a, like, a, a, shared a picture of a Tibetan monk that was, uh, <laughs> it was like, he was like dead or something. And it was like, I found it really funny and I shared it and <laughs> someone reported it. That was, yeah. I thought it was really harsh to be fair. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> I, I it was fucking brilliant. Um, that got removed to the community standards. Um, Lad Bible put in a copyright claim against a piece of content that we edited, which I found really, I pushed against it. They, they backed down and then they got the original creator to, to report in it. That fucked us. Haven't you done some work with Lad Bible? Yeah. 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 Was We've this got a good, after that or before that? Just before, during and after. It's, it's oh, just okay. business, mate. It's yeah, just yeah. thing. It's an automatic thing. They've got a flag. So that was, that happened. And it's just a, a build up of things. So it culminated, if that is even a word, in a three month, well, it turned out to be three months, but at the time they just said, you're, you're, you're done. You, it's indefinitely. Mm -hmm. I had a sneaky suspicion that it would be 90 days. So I kind of kept that hope that we would, we would come back. 
But what that did teach us, I saw, I've got a friend on Facebook and I phoned him and I said, mate, what's the, what's the caper here? He said, mate, you've got to start another page. Yeah. I said, like, what do you mean? We've got 550,000 in there. It's not, yeah. He said, tough shit. No, yeah. Not, you're, you're not, so can't you find Mark? And he said, no. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I send the sending DM yeah. to his he's personal. He's really high level yeah. at London. Yeah. I said, let's get hold of, send Mark an email. Yeah. Tell him I'm your mate. Tell him I live at uni. He's like, no, man, I can't. <laughs> um, so we started another page and got that monetized in like two months. But what it taught us, we've actually got, we've got, we've got it back in there, which is great. Like, Jesus Christ. They taught us not to have all our eggs in one basket, which is great. We're pushing YouTube a lot better now. And we had a long chat with Callum about sort of the different type of content we want to make for YouTube. And we've, we've been a lot more professional. You know, we're, we're thinking about our strategy now, even with TikTok. And it was a good thing, mate. Again, yeah. like, probably cost us six figures um, for the three months. But we got by. Still here. I'm still here smiling. But, and it's pushed you. Yeah, mate. Sense to yeah, take it's that probably, it's probably a good thing. Now, now yeah. I, was, I was also, this is a good thing to admit on camera, I was being rogue with some of the content we we're putting out. Yeah. And I was also playing with Callum's job. My yeah. mortgage. Yeah, yeah. You know, and you can't be like that. And I've, I've, it, it, it dawned on me very quickly that you need to be more fucking considered with, and it's not just you, and it's not just me anymore, like a, like a lone ranger. You've got to be professional in how you act and conduct yourself. Like telling people to fuck off in the comments. Yeah. yeah. Can't do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> not that's really, it really upset me not being able to do that anymore, but yeah. I've got to be, you know, it's the truth. You've yeah. got to be, you know, professional. Yeah. These are all the struggles that I've had to adapt, not being a thug, you know, like trying to be a, a normal human. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it was, it was good though, to be fair. We've, you know, we've, we're now going overseas and trying to broaden our horizons, which is good. Yeah. What's the way, where you plan to go next? Are you allowed to say? Yeah, I'll say, yeah. We're gonna, <clears throat> hopefully we're going to go to Paris yeah. at the end of this month. Amazing. I'm going marlin fishing in, 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 in June, which should be fun. Cape Verde, <laughs> so I'm probably going to get some like marlin reviews done. Yeah. Or tuna, that should be fun. <laughs> and then we're going to try and do a bit more in America. Nice. So Florida, nice. LA. Nice. Yeah. And so like, for you guys right now, are you dependent on your sponsors to get there or does yeah. the company like, are you turn off, turn over enough that like without your sponsors, you could still do all this tra like traveling? How, how does it work for you? So the monetization goes up and down every day and you can't predict it. It's, it's uh, not dependable. Sometimes it's very good. Sometimes it's like, at the moment it's right down. Yeah. And you, you can't predict it's like the wind. Yeah. So as a business, we've got a fucking big audience. Yeah, yeah. So one way to alleviate that problem for us is to sell advertising space like we do with you guys. Yeah. Work with, not sell advertising, but work with partners like yourselves yeah, yeah. that can benefit from our audience, I've got a packaging company on board now. We've got yeah. a meat supplier. We've got you. Yeah. We've, we've got certain boxes that I think won't, contra won't uh, what's the word? Conflict with each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, that I can sell and just, it just levels us out and allows us to, to go further and do more as a business. Sure. You, sure. you don't get to that point unless you put the work in. So it's, it's where you need to be now to, hand hand. to progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, we've got aspirations to go further afield. And we, we, we really... I would say I really couldn't, we couldn't do it without the likes of yourselves and other yeah, sponsors. Yeah. It's just, you know. It's good to hear. And we're, we're like, like I said, like with your New York trip, like we're always happy to support. Yeah, we we want to see it like, we, we want to see the content. I love New York and, and uh, like I'm, I sent you a list and I like places yeah. and I was like, I want to see you go and review the place that I've been to as well. Like some of the, some of the, uh, yeah, yeah. So obviously you, you watch Dave Portner stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. Like John's of Blake Street, yeah. Callum will tell you, when I got out of the taxi, I actually screamed. <laughs> I was like, I literally I saw the sign. Yeah, I was like, yeah. fuck it out. Yeah. It was amazing. But you know, you'd go into these, what was, what was cool about New York was you'd go into these pizza shops and they, they all have on the wall pictures of people who'd go there. You know, like uh, in Manchester, you'd have like someone from Coronation Street or some other sh actor, yeah. whatever, you know, they'd be like DiCaprio, yeah, yeah. Jack Nicholas, like, yeah. you know, some, it's Jack like um, yeah. in um, like, it's like mega stars, like in Joe's, like they've got all the photos. Like, yeah, you've been to Joe's, yeah, 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 yeah. That was the first pizza place I went to. In the, New York. It, yeah, it's we, good, we, isn't it? We stumbled as well as with my, my girlfriend at the time. Like, we literally, I'd wanted to go, I had it on like my list of places, That's to go. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and we literally just stumbled on it by accident going somewhere else. We was going to a place called Lombardi's, which yes. was uh, it's like known as like the first pizza place in that new or the first like coal oven place, like something like that. And I was like, I seen a. Food God, Jonathan Jaban, 
he'd been there. I was like, right, I really need to go there. So we were on our way there, and then St. Joe's there. I was like, right, I need to go get some. And then that was it. Then it was done. Like the pizza. How was much better good. is the pizza in York, though? It's, yeah, like, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's not even the same product. No. I actually think it's not even the same. Yeah, it is. It's, it's ridiculous. And they take it so serious as well, don't they? Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> there's, a, there's, there's a lot of passion behind it. What, what, the UK, like, you've got your kebab shop pizza, which is just the same ever. It's terrible. It's drunk pizza. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. And then you compare it to something like that and you'll never, you'll never want to eat it again. No. Like, I never have kebab shop pizza anymore. I don't have. I haven't had many <clears throat> pizzas in England that I really love. You're not there's, a fan there's of a few. You're not a fan of Neapolitan, are you? No. It's terrible. See, I love Neapolitan. I only had a, I only had a fist fight <laughs> at, a, um, at a content creator's uh, little gathering. <laughs> I'm not going to say it because I didn't really like him anyways. Um, <laughs> I said to him, I think he's half, half Italian, and yeah. I said across the table that Neapolitan pizza was trash. Yeah. Used, I've never had this experience before. I've said it a few times, but to my mates and stuff, but I've never actually said it to an Italian. The rage that came over his face. Yeah. When I said that was like, I let me say, what, what did you say? <laughs> so I think, it's, I think it's trash, mate. <laughs> and he, uh, he, was, he said, you can't say that about, you can't say that about the yeah. I said, I just did, mate. It's like yeah, insulting the terrible. queen, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I, and I did, I did, I, I did, I, he was, he got so much more furious. I thought, well, I'm going to have to apologise here or we're going to have a, have a, a start scuffle. throwing hands. <laughs> Start throwing hands in the middle of the thing. It's probably not the most professional thing to do. Yeah, no, but you're a content creator's event, so it yeah. probably would have been pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and I had to explain that. What I meant was that English Neapolitan uh, copies, I don't like. They're wet, floppy, and the, the cheese all falls off. It's not, not my cup of tea. Mm. But people do say that the real thing in Naples is great. Yep. So I think we're going to have to go so, and, um, and yeah. suss it out. But, yeah, it's nice to be able to travel to eat, eat food. It's, I suppose, a bit like... But your members must do things with their with their side incomes to yeah, it's actually doing stuff like that. It's, it's whatever, great, whatever, like, whatever the passion is, they can now fulfill it more so because they've got extra money to do stuff. Yeah. And that's what it's about. It's like it's you're making this extra like everyone it's about like smiling more. Yeah, like like and I say it all the time. I've said it on every podcast I've done, it's not a dress rehearsal. You've got one life. Why not oh. maximize it? Do everything you want to do. Like, yeah. why would you leave any stone unturned? Mm. Like. Do whatever you want to do. Like, make it happen, but put the extra effort in. Like, do something like aftermarket. Make your extra money, and it sort of allow you to do whatever you want. Or, not even like aftermarket, just do whatever, just make sure you're living your life the right way. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. If, just by chance, a, a nice way of doing that is having a bit more funds. Yeah. And just by chance, this is a great yeah, way like, of doing it, and you don't need a and, you don't need a degree or a, yeah, of course, and or like, rich parents or, you know, because all, that's another thing. People think you need a lot of money to, to get into this, to buy them. You don't. It's, some of the things on your... I'm just going to free. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You can start with, we, we, we posted a method the other day like to get items from Amazon for free. So it's like... Do you remember one of the first pictures you said to me, by the way? I remember this. Huh. Um, you said, our members the other day. You're like, you, saw, you whispered down the phone <laughs> to me. It was like really funny. Um, price faults on Amazon. Oh, was it the chocolate? The chocolate. <laughs> yeah, got me. I, and I was like, what? Yeah, no yeah, way. Yeah. Someone labelled a box of big dairy milk. Yeah, yeah. Not, like, it wasn't you today. It was, it was, like, it was like, something like... It was something like it ended up being like, like 50 quid's worth of chocolate for like 99p. That's yeah, like, yeah, and everyone, they like we ordered like a whole box of it for the one Hundreds person. of units yeah. of chocolate. Like, it's like, like Someone I, got the sack for that, bro. Yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't, I completely forgot about that. <laughs> it's like, Paul, why have we got 57 pounds in the bank and we've lost all the chocolate? Yeah. <laughs> what can you explain yeah, that yeah, to me, please? He's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll be a labelling issue. Yeah. Am I right in thinking they've got to send it out if that's the case? Uh, so they don't. So they don't. A lot of times it does happen. They have to honour it or try and uh, honour it? Or? So it depends. So in this case, they didn't... Uh, no, so they honoured it until a certain point and then they caught <laughs> on. So it's like certain <laughs> stuff falls through the net. Yeah. And then they, but they will restrict it and pull it back when they do. But like you, you, it happens on websites all the time. Like JD did it the other day where there was a price error and like there was people picking up uh, kids' Jordans like way, way under retail price. It had to be a price fault um, and then price shot back up again. Um, but everyone who up managed to order, successfully ordered, they honoured it and then mm. they made a shit ton of money from it. It's like it's like having someone send you that information. General public probably never, ever heard of that. If you're in aftermarket or any other, like, any other sneaker-related server, you would have known about it and you would have made a good money. Like, it's, that's what it's about. So you, you're obviously doing a bit more content. I feel like I'm asking you the questions now, bro. Like, um, you're obviously <laughs> yeah. doing a bit of content now, yeah. putting yourself on the front of the uh, the lens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that nervous for you? Like you've kind of been in the shadows a little bit. Yeah, obviously, did the stuff of Sky, but 
Yeah, it's been hor- it's been horrific. <laughs> no, so for me, like it was, it's been hard because my persona on Discord, like Discord, is everyone's anonymous. Nobody knows anything. My name is not anything related to myself. I was like an alias, and then like it's sort of hiding in the shadows. And I've been doing that for like eighteen months, let's say. And then the past couple of months, we got approached by Sky, then BBC and stuff like that. And I was like, and then like I seen some other people creating content in the space. I was like, maybe this is a time like we need to get in there. And then like, I spoke with like one of our consultants and they said like, you need, there needs to be a face of the brand now. They need to realize that this isn't a scam. It's not some weird guy hiding behind like an alias. Like you actually have to sort of like, people want to be able to resonate with you. Like, and I feel like people more relate, like it's, it's easy to relate to someone if you're seeing their face, isn't it? And like people can see who you are and know that you're not a bullshitter. Then that's what we're trying to push now. So for me now it's, creating TikToks, trying to boost my own social profile and sort of trying to trying to just get out there. But it's been it's been horrible trying to film at first. Like we've done so like, many things. You takes know what you're stuff. talking about. I think you, yeah. I think if you're gonna get uncovered or as a scam artist, you 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 know, it would have been happened a long time ago. You yeah. know what you're talking about. You you live and breathe it. So yeah. I think it's a great, great move. It's just, Did you have a coming out party on, on Discord by the way? Like this is me. Do you know what? I, uh, pre- I pretty much should have because yeah. every single moment was like, oh my God, this is him. Like, <laughs> I mean, people, people in other like Discord chats would say like, who is this guy? Then I was getting tagged in them Discord chats. Like, it was like, it was like the UK sneaker scene like had just exposed like one of the biggest companies, like the owners of the biggest company. Yeah. I was like, oh my God. Like, no one took an interest like in me before, like even though I was the owner, like and everyone in the space pretty much knows me. No one really tried to do a background check on me. But then... When you get when we were on like Sky, you then get all these console gaming fans, like, and then like people were looking on my LinkedIn, like posting my information everywhere, and they were like, oh, right, we know where he lives now. We're gonna go to his house. So, like, right, turn up then. Like, what, yeah. what, what, no, and like people said, so like, right, we're gonna do this. We're gonna send X Y Z to your house, and nothing turned up. Like, lovely. What are you doing? <laughs> but yeah, I'm. Um, and this is gonna help as well. Getting yeah, used I to it. A, I think it's a great. Um, a great idea. And like, even here, when you speak now, it's going to, similar to me, I'm very, I would say I'm a very normal person. Yeah. We, we do do quite, we do well for ourselves, I suppose you could say. Yeah. Only just a starting lot you do as well, but yeah. it just shows that we're not, I haven't got a silver spoon up my ass in the review. No, neither of us. You, uh, how old are you, Jack? 24. 24. Yeah. Mad. <laughs> great. Incredible. Thank you. Um, yeah, good for you, man. It's, it's taking the leap at your age, is, I think it's very admirable. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you, you're showing the, Paving the way, and maybe I am as well a little bit, paving yeah, the way for, for other yeah. people to just think, do you know what, maybe maybe my school results aren't going to determine yeah. where I'm going to be. Yeah, because that's the thing, you don't, uh, let's say I started after market was 22, how old were you when you started to review club? 29. Well, there you go, so you can start at any different age, it doesn't matter, like you yeah. just have to start. No, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have been ready when I was your age though. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't ready, I was, I was a, been an idiot. <laughs> you know, everything happens at the right time. Yeah, yeah. You just I don't think I'm still quite not still an idiot. <laughs> at least, you, yeah, but at least you can't be exposed in the comments of being an idiot. <laughs> so we've got a couple of questions. Yeah, from, let's, let's do it from aftermarket members. Oh, why have I been going a little bit nervous now already? <laughs> now they're, they're not bad. Trust me, they're um, quite sensible. I told them to keep it sensible. I think this is a good one to be honest with you. Um, and so someone said here, Matt, that yep. they feel that from being an aftermarket, they spend too much of their profits on self-indulgences. And like, so they wanted to learn like how how often like you actually spoil yourself. Like, do you like- I spoil myself a lot. Yeah. So you're not like someone who's gonna no. stick by the book and just be like, invest no. a bit, like reinvest, but how, how do you do it? I probably am driven the wrong way. I don't know if, I don't know if I'm gonna give you the right answer here. I quite like, um, Sometimes reaping the rewards of my of my labour. Yeah, I think sense. that sometimes I'm driven sometimes by things probably like this person. If you want to do something, that's what maybe sometimes gets me out of bed in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Um, and other people, more business people, would say, "No, you need to do this." And I'm like, I don't yeah. think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, if you yeah, want to buy I'm, yourself I'm a saying. nice fucking watch or a nice car, or yeah, yeah. if you're putting the work in and you're not breaking the bank, yeah, have a strategy. Put some money you know you need to put in for your to reinvest in the next month yeah. or whatever it might be. As long as you cash flow, yeah, fine. just. Do what makes you smile, man. Like yeah, yeah. tomorrow's promise to yeah. no one. Life's too short, isn't it? That, just, that's I just that we all need to relish. Like I, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I've made some really silly mistakes with cars and stuff. But do you know what? 
I loved every minute of it. Yeah. And I'm probably going to do the same again this yeah, summer. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so. It, uh, the, these the questions are really business oriented. I'm going to get, I'll get found out here because oh, this guy's a fucking blagger. <laughs> no, no, no. So, this one, I think you can, uh, no, you'll really, really like this one. What's your death row meal? <sighs> Some sort of like emotional, hearty soul food. So we in New York, we went to, um, what was that? What's the name? What's the name? Sylvia's. Oh, Sylvia's fried chicken, mate. I yeah, nearly yeah. cried. <laughs> Bruv, it was like being six years old, eating my nan's roast chicken and mash. It was fucking crazy. And I thought, I think this might be it. Yeah, yeah. That's like food that like just got me like mad. Yeah, yeah. That's the beautiful thing about food. It can transport you back to a, like instantly. Yes. Trigger a memory. Yeah, crazy. The thing would be that it was fried chicken, ribs, mashed potato, um, really simple. Maybe like a T bone or something. I don't know. That kind of nothing too fancy. Just like yeah. food that would fill me up. Put a smile yeah. on my face. Perfect before getting electrocuted. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> All right. Um, so, sixteen-year-old who's not keen on going to uni and wants to do something else, but not sure what to do. How, like, what would your advice be? If you don't want to, I went to uni and hated it. It wasn't for me. Um, yeah, don't go to uni. Education isn't only at university and at school. Yeah. You can self-educate your, yourself on whatever you're passionate about yeah. at home. I would literally think of the one thing in your head that you love the most in this world, you think you'd like to be involved with yep. on a day-to-day -day basis and just do what makes you smile because the chances are if you do that, you're probably going to miss assess it because you like what you're doing and you're going to get up in the morning when you don't feel like it. So, you know, platforms like Aftermarket Arbitrage, obviously you're on it already. Put some effort into that. That could give you a bit of side, side hustle money to then explore what you really want to do with it. It's horses. Yep. Lego, whatever it is, like, yeah, yeah. just do what you want to do. And that's... That's random, horses and Lego. <laughs> Maybe horses and Lego together. <laughs> I think for me as well, like, I feel like I can relate to this, like, I loved uni. I, yeah. I, lo I loved studying, I loved education, like, I was a nerd. But, like, I know that if I didn't go to uni, my friends that set up, similar company to me, they set up, like, when I was my first year of uni, so they got a two-year head start on me. So I feel that, like, if I didn't go to uni now, I probably could have had two years more experience in my field. I could be two years further ahead. My business could be two times more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Like, it's sort of like, if if you don't want to go to uni right now and you've got something else, you've got an itch for something it's else. It's a big financial commitment as well, Jack, long term. Yes, 100%. I, I get emails saying like, you owe X amount, like, and I'm just like, I'll I, leave that. I only there. went to play rugby. So I was, yeah. I actually did a foundation degree, but got into the, the rugby team and it was like, a, I've got literally got this student debt for something I didn't even complete. Yeah. Just always play rugby, it's mad. I wish I never did it. <laughs> but it was good because I met, met people and stuff. Yeah, I don't yeah, regret yeah. it because it was good fun. We drank it a bit. But it was good. Good. Right. I, I, wish I, I wish I knew what I knew now. Knew yeah, then yeah. What I knew now though, about the world, which is. I think just before we close it off, you've got three pieces of advice you want to give to anyone listening to this. What would it be? The first piece of advice would be to. It's going to sound really bad, but just don't listen to anyone. Yep. Including your mum, your dad, yep. your best friends. Yep. Your path is for you and for you only. No one can tell you what to do. And people will give you advice that they feel is right for themselves. My point is, if you're passionate about something, do it. And don't just fucking listen to anyone. Yep. That's the first piece. Second piece is, stay consistent with whatever you decide to do. Consistency is a superpower that not a lot of people are talking about. Yep. Getting up in the morning and going again after, after a bit of a loss the day before, whatever, is, is a superpower. Stay consistent, stay hungry for it. And I think that I think that's a really good place to start. Yep. Just maintaining that consistency in anything is, is very, very important. Yeah. And the, my third point probably leads into the other one is to stay educated in what you feel. Self-education is massive. Yep. Keep up with trends, accountancy, whatever it might be, buying and selling, tax codes, whatever it might be, stay educated. Yep. Not just in your field, the fields around it as well, so you know about your market, you know what you're, you're getting involved with. 
you can see if you are educated, you can see opportunities and and good and good and bad. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I like. I feel like it's important for everyone nowadays to sort of broaden the perspective and like to look beyond what's known as traditional. So like for you, like for us, like you look at reselling, you look at NFTs, you look yeah. at anything that like you you open yourself up to any opportunity. Part of that part of that education is listening to people like you and other podcasts. There's like some of the most successful people in the world are doing podcasts now, giving you the keys to the castle. Yeah, yeah. And I love consumer knowledge like that. I'm not a big reader, so unfortunately, so I can't take in information that way. But even for a dummy like myself, you've got YouTube with some of these incredible people telling you how they've done what they've done. Yeah. So like that, edu- I love consuming knowledge and education like that in in all aspects of business. I think it's, I think it's in, we're, we're very lucky. Yeah, we're probably the first generation to have that library of knowledge yeah. on the tip of your fingers. I think it's, if, yeah. Why would you not? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. I think that was good, mate. Have you enjoyed it? Time to go and eat. <laughs> Busy day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. So I think we're going to round it up there. So we've had Matt from Food Review Club on. And it's been a pleasure, mate. Yeah, for our, for our first podcast, rightly so. It was the only way we could have started it off. Glad to have you on. And for anyone who's still listening, we're going to give the discount code The Edge, no spaces, and then that'll give you your membership at £5 for your first month. So that's just for anyone that's managed to stay on. Should we, you should also, I, I think I should get, you should do peanut pie discount code with an added caveat Anyone the same one, anyone that signs up with that discount code yeah. should get a little something special. So we'll do right, Sam okay. will do a dance. <laughs> so we'll do <laughs> on our most we'll do on our most expensive month, monthly membership that includes this standard and Amazon. If you use code peanut pie. Sam will do a dance. You'll get Sam will do a dance and you'll get that for ten pounds instead of fifty pounds for your first month. Fucking what a deal that is. Yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> right, thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. Nice one. Great.